And how many people? Here in. So, sir, so this this particular batch is going to have both the programs together. As far as the familiarization program is concerned, the infra management as well as the infrastructure law. Put together, the uh, 2020 uh, 22 intake is of 63 people. Both the programs together. Yep. Nisha, are we still expecting Dr. Jumut to join? Is he still facing some issues? Yes, sir. I am just expecting he is just joining in two minutes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh. So, um, you know, let's get started. Uh, so we. Can, uh, yeah, I understand, sir. Because I mean, it's it's already uh, you know uh, seven minutes past our uh, uh, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, sir, let me give me uh, give me two minutes to let me let me formally introduce you, all of you. Okay. The batch, Dr. Pankaj Singh, my former boss in the institute, <laughs> is something I'm very proud to say in the first uh, you know couple of seconds here. Dr. Pankaj Singh, everyone, he is the senior vice president, data center business at Adani Group. He was the group head, talent strategy, talent management. talent development and leadership development at adani group he is also the head of hr international business including north america for the adani group in addition to that he is the uh, he was in fact you know the head of uh, business development and services uh, as well as a professor of uh, strategy and consulting at adani institute of infrastructure management uh, at adani group he has been leading the efforts to maximize people potential drive human capital transformation uh, and key strategic uh, initiatives to build a robust leadership pipeline of of leaders and employees in the group he also mentors the adani international innovation hub at adani institute of infrastructure we have uh, mr tino ubale here also joining uh, with us he uh, represents the cell the innovation and startup cell at the institute and one of these days you will definitely hear from him and our innovation initiatives and startup initiatives at the campus and the way we uh, support the uh, startup initiatives and uh, prior to this role uh, dr pankaj singh was a managing director also at uh, growth leaders it's a global strategic uh, consulting and leadership development consultancy Uh, he has moved all over he has he he's his client base uh, has been all across different continent before that he was also with uh, deloitte consulting us and there uh, he was very instrumental in implementing new global talent strategy in financial advisory services correct me if i'm wrong sir yeah mm -hmm. and you know he was responsible for implementing uh, new leadership development entire system and architecture for uh, uh, deloitte's uh, us and china consulting joint venture so all in all a very versatile personality uh, uh, dr pankaj singh and uh, uh, we are very fortunate to have you today sir to address all the students i can see dr jimuth has also logged in sir i uh, had to you know begin with the with with the introduction of dr pankaj singh right yes, so he is from there in new york and then we uh, we went ahead but now over to you sir uh, uh, please take it forward so uh, uh, i are you giving it to me Yes, of course. Please. I I I would say without uh, you know uh, much ado, I would like to call him to speak because uh, you have already introduced him, and uh, uh, you know um, if I go on counting uh, what he has done, then the, I think it will exhaust most of the time. Then it is better for the students that he comes and he speaks, and uh, with his words they get enriched. Okay. So, uh, sir, without further ado, I would like you to, you know, uh, introduce the students uh, about the data center business of uh, Adani's. Can we have a round of applause for him? Although I know people are uh, there at the houses, but still. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jimuth, uh, Hiran, uh, Nisha, and the uh, team. So uh, let me uh, first ask you all, uh, and I don't know how do you respond. Uh, you you guys uh, can unmute yourself, right? 
uh, Jimut, uh, they can un unmute themselves, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so uh, you you have heard the saying now that data is the new oil, right? And uh, and especially in times like this, uh, when we were in uh, in this pandemic environment where people work from home, there's a lot of activity, they study from home, uh, communicate from home. There is more data transfer and data consumption happening. So, So any idea how much data is being consumed across the world? And by no the way, data, no idea. What you... No idea. OK, all right. All right. Let me quickly give you a little uh, flavor of it. So. And this is uh, just a part of the picture, OK? Data is being used by various services that is being offered to consumers, to corporations, to government, to different uh, other uh, other different market uh, consumers. It, so and it can be in the form of cloud services. Right, then it could be in in terms of Internet of Things where all the devices connected to each other communicate via the data. In the industry and then. The big data and analytics, which is a huge growing segment uh, where the data consumption and utilization is is growing exponentially. Big data is where you store a lot of data, process it and use it to make to bring out business insights and uh, do analytics on it to uh, make you know bring out better uh, to make better business decisions as you can see uh, that all the three that i talked about categories there is a big growth upwards of 20 20% cagr which is cumulative growth rate between 2018 and projected up to 2024. The cloud services, uh, about 30% growth. Uh, Internet of Things, about 28% growth. And big data and analytics, about 24% growth. So these are big growth drivers to set up data centers because that's where all these data that I'm talking about is getting stored. Whether you are consuming data on your social media or in the classroom like this, online sessions like this, or the emails that you send, all the all the documents that you transfer, all that data eventually gets stored in some data center somewhere in the world. So suppose if you send a WhatsApp message to a friend who is 
sitting probably next to you in the classroom. So the, the transaction would be you send a message, say hi. It goes through the fiber connected to some place in a data center or you send an attachment along with that too. It goes and gets deposited in a particular data center somewhere and it could be in the US, it could be in the Europe or any other part of the world. And then this is the send part and the receive part from that data center, it comes back to your location, your friend's location and onto his or her device and is displayed, whether it's a file or a text message or a graphics or what's, whatever it may be. So, and all this happens in a fraction of a second. And that is important. You guys uh, are in a generation, you, you may not know what was slow data transfer, uh, where you would open up a web page and wait for 10, uh, anywhere from three to 10 seconds for a web page to load. And, and you, today you cannot, if, if someone waits for more than three seconds or two seconds, they will walk away from that website. That is the speed at which the data is getting transferred and transacted across these days. And, and so given all this types of consumption that is happening, the data consumption, whether it's globally and in India, where it is growing at a significant pace, there is a tremendous need to set up data centers. There is most of the data centers earlier were in the US, Europe and some in Singapore and APAC region. But given that the data, data consumption and uh, utilization is growing uh, at such a large pace in India, we, ha we have data center being set up here as well. And, and you can see that the, uh, and uh, the, the, there's a projected so let me just uh, quickly also mention how data data is measured w what is the size so what is the unit of measure of a data center business right uh, so if, if you talk about port uh, you will say how many million metric ton of cargo has been handled through a port uh, if you talk about power plant you would say how many uh, megawatt of power was generated, right? If you talk about uh, Fortune brand of products, how many, uh, how, uh, what in, in terms of rupees revenue was uh, generated, right? Uh, so the, trans, the unit in which we talk in the data center industry is megawatt. Why megawatt? because data center is a, is a heavy consumer of energy. If you look at the entire cost structure of a data center business, about 60 to 70 percent of the cost of running a data center comes from power and power is measured in megawatt. So when we say that Adani is going to set up a 200 megawatt data center, it means the IT power that will be fed to the data center that we are setting up, it will be consuming 200 megawatt of uh, 200 megawatt of power. So every time 
you hear a data center or you will hear about data centers, the size of the data center, uh, you will always hear that it is associated with some numerical value and megawatt. So let me uh, also quickly uh, talk about this uh, slide. Uh, and before I jump into uh, the data center Adani business, what is the other driver? So I talked about one set of drivers is uh, the consumption of data, data and utilization of data, whether it's in your on your mobile devices. And by the way, the mobile devices are penetrating uh, in a big way all across. There are smart devices all across, even in the rural regions as well nowadays. So the rural penetration uh, of mobile and data consumption coupled with the in industry uh, consumption and the big data uh, industry uh, and analytics that happens there. All this is one of the big drivers for, uh, for the, the need to have data centers. And the, and the other one is that in India, we are talking about data privacy and data localization. So uh, I've been involved in uh, with uh, shaping up of government of India's data protection bill. It's called the PDP. Uh, personal data protection bill, which will require sensitive personal data to be stored in India only. So right now what happens is all, all the data, whether it's sensitive or not, gets is taken out to, as I said, whether it's in the US, Europe, or wherever the data centers of the Google's or the Microsoft's or um, Amazon are located. It's it goes there and gets stored. But it's important that the the depending upon the sensitivity of the data, it stays. Uh, you know, for a couple of reasons: for the individual's uh, privacy. And data is, and the data uh, once the data goes out, it it is out. It is outside of the purview and the jurisdiction, right? Um, there are law students also. Uh, you understand that if the data, wherever the data resides, that's where the jurisdiction applies. That that jur jurisdiction applies. So if if one of our datas for some reason gets compromised and it is residing on a data center or a, a location which is outside of India, it, it, it becomes very difficult for us as an individual to demand any corrective action uh, or uh, if a, a legal suit has to be filed it has to be in that particular jurisdiction uh, and th th that becomes a big problem, the jurisdiction problem. Um, and the data is outside now. So that's from the individual perspective. Then from the government and the nation's perspective, you know, it, it is a, a matter of national security as well. Uh, so for many of these reasons, uh, there is a data protect personal data protection bill which uh, was drafted in 2018 and in 2019 it got further refined and it uh, it was uh, to be tabled in the cabinet uh, union uh, uh, cabinet and uh, which is now being referred to a joint parliamentary committee and uh, that committee is uh, you know uh, reviewing it 
and we have made some suggestions. Uh, we have uh, lines of communication with that uh, joint parliamentary committee as well um, to ensure that the uh, you know the PDP bill comes in in a shape which is which serves the purpose of protecting individual sensitive data and national security as well. So that's and that will require data to be stored in India. So that's the other driver for having data, many more data centers in, in India. Then the, there are, you know, economic uh, policies, the e-commerce policy, then RBI has a policy in terms of, uh, you know, storing financial data, payment related data in India. Then there is telecom uh, law, and insurance insurance law and many more laws like that uh, that requires data to be stored in India. And of course, uh, you know, last year's uh, this year's budget uh, also talked about uh, having a national policy on data center, uh, which uh, I'm part of a task force uh, and uh, there'll be a national data center policy. Uh, as well. So, uh, so I talked about data center, uh, da data center being measured in terms of megawatt. However, the data itself is measured in terms of bytes, right? Uh, you, you all aware, uh, you know, megabyte, gigabyte, but you look at this particular slide, it says digital India is likely to shoot you know, the drive that we are talking about, you know, the digitization and all. All this is going to lead us to, to grow at such a pace and the amount of data that is in this by the end of this year you know, that is going to get generated in India is going to be in to the tune of 2.3 million petabytes. That's mind boggling number, right? And we are growing uh, the, the India's growth of data consumption and utilization is twice the global growth rate and which means and that that is the reason we need to have data centers closer home. And there is, you know, in the, these drivers and also if, you know, um, just to give you another um, perspective, the closer the data centers are. Now, I mean, technology is getting advanced tremendously, but closer the data center is to the point of consumption of the data, the latency factor is reduced. And latency is the gap, as I was trying to say, when you send something and it gets eventually delivered to someone else, um, the amount it takes, the time it takes, if you open a web page, the amount of time it takes uh, for the web, or the data that you request, amount of time it takes to arrive on your device. Uh, and this is all in fraction of a second nowadays. However, uh, latency matters a lot. Imagine you are making a transaction uh, uh, on on Wall Street or uh, you know Dalal Street, and uh, the transactions, uh, you know, there are these quant uh, algorithms which make transactions, and in you know they, they get executed in a fraction of a second, and if there is a gap in in the intended time frame of execution versus when it eventually gets executed and there is a gap larger than uh, you know uh, initially planned then that deal itself can become um, not so lucrative right uh, that uh, the, the trans uh, the algorithm was supposed to 
place the trade at, at, a, at a certain time, uh, but it gets delayed by, uh, by, for some reason, because of the latency, because the, the trade was being placed in India and the server was somewhere else. Uh, and it, it, because of the delay, there could be a significant impact on the deal itself, the size of the deal, whether, you know, it, it could, as it might, in some cases, it might turn out to be a loss. Um, so, so that's the significance of latency and uh, proximity of having data centers or data servers uh, to the point of consumption of the data. All right, so that's, uh, um, And that makes India a, a really important market for data centers. I ignore everything on this slide except what I'm going to talk on in terms of the evaluation parameter. Just look at just look at what is written over there. Nothing else on this slide is required for our conversation right now. So how, how do we measure the success of a data center? What makes data, data center competitive and, um, uh, and really uh, significant is what kind of fiber connectivity you have because you know all the data gets transferred through the fiber, right? The telecom fiber then what kind of social infrastructure exists and the talent pool. So data center requires people with a certain background. It requires uh, a location to be in a location where there is, uh, where employees can live, can, um, can work, the children can study. So it requires a certain social infrastructure and a certain kind of talent, uh, whether it's big data or analytics. So, it, you know, that kind of talent pool also needs to be available for the success of the data center. And then renewable power. So let me just also uh, uh, mention that Adani's focus. So data, as, as, as I said, data center industry is a, is a power guzzler. Uh, it, it consumes lots of power. And that is why it is important that uh, in the to today's scenario when environment is so important, and especially with uh, the global uh, COP Paris um, Accord and also India's commitment uh, to be a renewable powered country, it is imp and also the the clients who would use data centers likes like of the google and amazon and microsoft they also wanting to be environmentally responsible they are shifting towards majority of the power consumption of uh, in a data center should be from renewable sources and which is a great news uh, you know for india again because we generate and we have a, a very um, significant goal as a country to uh, be a renewable power con uh, power consumer and uh, data centers that adani is going to build or is in the process now we are going to be uh, using renewable power most of the, most of it as renewable power our goal is to be 100% renewable power uh, powered data centers which means we will have uh, our data centers being powered or the power supply coming from renewable generation whether it's solar or wind and uh, Adani, of course, you might have already heard from renewable uh, 
teams or or will uh, uh, down the line that uh, we have a significant renewable uh, generation business and uh, that's an important play for adani uh, going forward and so at Ad adani data centers as well we will be uh, renewable power data centers however there is a portion of you know you might we might need like a backup or something if there is for some reason uh, there is some interruption in the power supply that could be diesel generators or it could be uh, the regular power uh, supply or we are looking at different other uh, fuel cells and other uh, sources as well um, for those kind of situations and then uh, so th that's uh, another key factor in a data center uh, industry uh, the the source of power and especially renewable power uh, where where it is located because when you uh, when you when you talk about renewable power you you, you know there they in india there'll be you know the presence of solar is there almost everywhere but some states have more solar generation happening uh, than other states so uh, you know states like karnataka has significant uh, uh, solar uh, uh, generation happening um, so you know they, they have an advantage so if you set up a data center in bangalore uh, you can bring solar uh, energy uh, easily to your data centers so the again uh, where your solar source of solar generation is um, or the renewable generation is uh, that also impacts otherwise what happens is that you have to bring power i, I don't want to get into all this technical detail but, but you know just to give you a quick one liner that if you uh, if you locate your data centers uh, too far away from the sources uh, of renewable power there is renewable re renewable energy by the way you understand is that you cannot uh, store it right uh, it, it has to be consumed so uh, it, it gets generated and it gets consumed so there are different uh, mechanisms and tariffs that gets involved because if you uh, if you generate excess uh, solar renewable power it has to be consumed somewhere so you'll put it in the grid and it gets consumed and then when in the night when there is no so solar renewable power being generated when you will need to consume it you will get that much power from the grid which you had put in during the daytime uh, so, you know so all that uh, banking and all that happens uh, so that's a significance of uh, a renewable power uh, in the data center industry and of course uh, you know the policies that uh, you know needs to be supportive uh, which i talked about because without proper policies whether it's the data protection bill or the uh, financial policy data data bill uh, or e-commerce uh, bill uh, insurance bill all all, all of these uh, policies uh, it, it becomes uh, data data center will not thrive the way it can if there is a supportive set of policies government policies and of course uh, uh, you know uh, as i was saying the we should have uninterrupted and also water availability water is important uh, for couple of reasons um, and so uh, water being uh, uh, for cooling purposes water is very important so we need to have so if you plan to have a data center say in rajasthan uh, you will have to consider the availability of water versus in a place where water is easily available 
uh, and uh, available uh, without interruption uh, on a regular basis because data center uh, data centers what it contains so if so let me also talk about what what is a data center data center is basically a place where you have bunch of computers big computers which you would you know is called servers right and which store tremendous amount of data there are they, they are always on that's the other important parameter in a data center industry the uptime you know you, you, your data centers have to be up 24/7 365 because if that goes down uh, some place some consumer will not have access to data uh, that is that is why it is significantly important that the data centers are up and running all the time and so they are constantly being run so there is constant power supply coming in there is uh, so in a data center which has bunch of servers there are power uh, cables coming in uh, powering them then there are uh, little substations and then uh, you know um, uh, other protective devices so that uh, you know the power surge shouldn't damage the servers so those are some of the devices that you will see there surge protectors and then um, distribution of power uh, to different uh, uh, bays of the servers where they are located uh, and then uh, each server being uh, fed through a fiber uh, through a data cable and connected uh, to uh, to the outside world um, through a fiber right and um, and then if the fiber you know and, and there are various kinds of fiber uh, outside uh, it could be under the ground it could be under the sea uh, suppose if your your data goes across atlantic uh, you know from say new york to europe or um, uh, or asia it if, you know there is a transatlantic cable that runs uh, so there are different kind of fiber also so the power line the fiber the servers the cooling uh, cooling uh, devices because data data servers generate lot of heat because they are running constantly and consuming power constantly and that makes it get heated up uh, so there could be anywhere you know the temperature between the outside and the server room could be anywhere between 10 to 15 deg degrees centigrade difference so th that's a significant temperature rise that happens and th and you cannot have your data servers uh, you know operating at such high temperatures so you need to keep cooling them up and uh, so the, the cooling is of a significant important uh, of uh, significance importance um as well uh, so there are going to be chillers uh, uh, cooling devices uh, backup devices uh, for power and uh, so things like this so so your data center would look like you know uh, rooms with bays of da uh, data servers with cables power cables coming in water sources coming in fiber fibers coming in uh, and of course going out as well and uh, and people uh, and in the data server rooms there are no people working in the, those rooms there'll be you know control rooms where people will be sitting and monitoring the health of the uh, data servers and you know the uptime and all those things that we were talking about and there'll be maintenance people also if there is you know uh, which particular so in the control room itself people would know which particular server is having a issue or a problem and what needs to be done uh, and then a, a technician would go in and fix that problem in that specific location uh, 
where the data server is located. So that's uh, in uh, uh, you know in brief about the data center, why we need to set up data centers, uh, what are the uh, what are the drivers uh, for the data center industry, wh what are the parameters which makes data center industry uh, successful and thrive. So let me also uh, at this point. Uh, OK, so let me just uh, I have this slide. So yeah, I, we talked a little bit of about this. So um, renewable power, uh, we talked about that. Uh, you know, data centers being the nerve centers of economy. Um, yeah, the other thing is that it has a lot of benefits to the state and the country as a whole in terms of creation of jobs. A lot of jobs get created <laughs> directly or indirectly because of the data centers. So that's a, a huge benefit of uh, data centers for any, any state. And then we talked uh, about the infrastructure needs, uh, you know, uh, and of course, roads, sewage, and all that is required uh, to have in terms of infrastructure around the data center. And uh, uh, and also, in order to attract uh, and uh, data, the presence of data center would mean there is a IT and a cloud ecosystem, which would mean. Uh, people wanting to invest because today we are uh, you know gr using cloud ecosystem significantly now uh, so and people are investing in it so if you have a data center you create a cloud ecosystem and an IT ecosystem around it and uh, that would uh, attract a lot of investment as well for uh, for a particular state or a country as a whole Great, and of course uh, uh, there is a lot of startups that can happen, right? There could be analytics startup that can happen, a machine learning startup. Uh, you talk about machine learning. Machine learning is, you know, it takes your data, it looks at the past data, it uh, works a particular regression uh, and, uh, you know, creates uh, a better informed uh, set of insights for you uh, and learns uh, and improves. Uh, on a constant basis, right? Uh, so whether it's AI or machine learning or analytics, uh, all these kind of uh, startups can thrive around data industry, data, uh, data center industry. So there is a huge multiplier impact happening for the economy as a whole. Let me also quickly talk about um, uh, a case study where uh, there's a place called Virginia Beach in US. Uh, it's uh, in the state of Virginia. Uh, earlier, there used to be data centers located mostly, as I was saying, you know, uh, data centers are better, closer to the point of consumption of the data. However, the technology has advanced significantly now. So, Earlier, the data cent a lot of data centers were in the New York, New Jersey area because of the Wall Street and all that uh, consumers of data in the big metro, New York metro and things like that. Uh, Virginia Beach or, or the state of Virginia created uh, um, a very uh, lucrative set of incentives. And uh, there was a lot of subsea cables from Virginia Beach to different parts of the world. And by doing all this, it made the the speed of connectivity that I was talking about. Uh, there was as good connectivity, the speed of connectivity from Virginia Beach to different places as 
you would have thought by uh, you know keeping a data center close to your point of consumption data consumption so virginia beach invested uh, and you know and created incentives so that c cables were run uh, connecting virginia beach to different places in the world and soon it became uh, the hub for the east coast of india now east coast of us uh, for uh, the data centers and they also gave lot of tax incentives you know purchase of uh, uh, you know capital expenditures uh, whether you invest in uh, the construction whether you invest in the it expenditures servers hardwares uh, things like that they gave lot of tax incentives for those equipments uh, and you know uh, deferred the tax uh created a uh, special opp opp opportunity zone uh and also a tax holiday for um, uh, 10 years so so that and uh, you know a lot of uh, local utilities gave power to data centers at a lower reduced cost and by doing all this um they created a data center hub which is now a case study uh, which we are looking to replicate in india as well so now let me talk about in uh, you know adani data centers so our plans our plan is to uh, in have data centers in mumbai because that's where uh, a lot of data centers are and um, there's more demand uh, to by the clients of data centers to have data centers located in mumbai so mumbai and uh, navi mumbai is uh, one area where we going to set up our data centers uh, noida uh, gurgaon area is the other data center that we are going to set up then chennai is the third Uh, by the way chennai has undersea cable coming to it uh, from singapore uh, so that's um, that's the con in terms of connectivity uh, chennai has a great uh, fiber connectivity so chennai is another uh, place that we are going to set up data centers we are also uh, going to create data centers at vizac and we have huge plans uh, over there uh, earlier we had uh, you know we had to scale it down uh, a little bit but uh, we have a significant plan over there in fact we are thinking about creating an entire integrated technology park over there with data centers with cloud ecosystem with uh, um, um, a, a business park over there bringing in many infrastructure companies to be located there and also a skill university which will uh, which will provide the talent uh, for the industries that uh, will be needed in the technology park that we are creating at vizac uh, is a huge uh, area that we have we are in the process of procuring uh, about 290 acres and uh, we are going to set up a data center park and a technology park over there uh, then the other locations that we are looking at is bangalore uh, hyderabad uh, hyderabad uh, you know near the airport uh, and uh, and then rajasthan jaipur is another location we are looking at so these this is uh, how we are looking at in terms of uh, the geographic locations uh, where we will have our data centers and uh, by the way we uh, at adani data centers we have uh, in the process of finalizing uh, a a joint venture with world's second largest uh, pretty much the first uh largest data center uh, based out of us uh, so we are uh, so 
that is going to bring us access to a lot of clients, large clients uh, that we are targeting as, as Adani data centers. Um, we will by through that JV we will have access to that uh, that group of uh, clients, um, large clients, and uh, uh, so that's about the JV. Uh, also, I also you know in data centers there are couple of categories of data centers, right? Um, the, uh, let me. Uh, you know, we have some time. Let me just take a couple of minutes to talk about that as well, and then we can have some questions uh, uh, after that. Uh, data centers are um, one, a hyperscale in uh, 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 nature, which means large data centers, like what I was talking about, uh, what we're going to set up in Vizac, right? It will be a hyperscale data center where we will have clients like uh, Google or you know Amazon or someone like that, large consumers of data to come and become our client of data center at that at that location. And so what what they will do is we bring everything we provide everything they just bring their own uh, applications and uh, in some cases hardware also uh, to some hardware which they, you know it is important uh, for for them uh, to have a proprietary or a, uh, you know from protection uh, perspective uh, they they will bring in their uh, applications and some devices but everything else in the data center in terms of the power, the fiber, the um, you know the equipments, uh, the cooling, uh, the talent, uh, everything would be provided by Adani. They just bring in and uh, uh, their applications and run because security is very important. Data security is very important. So that they will own. Everything else we provide. And that, and this will be at a very large scale. Um, you know, uh, as I was saying, data centers are measured in terms of megawatt. Um, so it could be, you know, one particular client could be uh, requiring a hundred megawatt of data center or fifty megawatt of data center, which is a huge data center. Um, so. Uh, Oh, and, and I, let me also quickly mention uh, the uh, when we talked about renewable, renewable power. You know, if you need, if you need one megawatt of power for data center, you would need five megawatt of renewable power to be generated. That so that's so that is the scale of renewable power industry that will uh, thrive around data centers as well because the power is an important source as i said which is 60 to 70 percent of, of of any data centers and uh, and to power that kind of uh, that scale of power and renewable power you would need five times the consumption of a data center uh, that needs to be generated in by the renewable company or in renewable uh, provider. So, uh, okay, so uh, this I, I want I went on a uh, diversion here just to bring you the perspective that how much of renewable power needs to be generated to power a one megawatt of uh, data center. So when you're talking about say 100 megawatt of data center, you would need 500 megawatt of renewable energy, which needs to be generated, which means, you know, whether it's Adani or someone else will have to set up a 500 megawatt of renewable power uh, source somewhere. 
uh, which is another business, a great business opportunity. OK, so uh, so that was hyperscale, uh, big clients, uh, you know, 50, 100 megawatt and that kind of nature. Then there are edge uh, data centers, which means the data centers are located close to the clients uh, where it is being used. And uh, in one particular little location, there could be uh, one maybe specifically for one particular client uh, where they they come and just use your services entirely or a bunch of clients could be there using your services over there uh, in that particular edge data centers which is so basically you know two kinds one is hyperscale which is at a larger scale uh, versus edge which is smaller and closer to the client location and hyperscale can be anywhere far away um, and at a very large scale. All right, uh, so that was the types of data centers. Okay. This is uh, not so important. All right, um, so here are some of the things as I was saying, uh, you know, endpoints where data uh, could be used, um, whether it's IoT, vehicles, people, mobile, computers, different assets, APIs, connected processes, uh, AR, VR, bots, all, all these places. OK, all right, um, so we spend an hour talking about data centers, um, you know, let's see if you guys have any questions. So thank you for such a talk sure that most of the students have learned a lot from it. Uh, even I have learned a lot from it. So uh, uh, there are, uh, I think we have uh, asked in the chat box almost 15 questions or so. So uh, will you be able to uh, take a poll 15 or uh, how should we go about it? Yeah, let's pick some questions uh, 15. Uh, let's. Uh, So shall I? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can, can yeah. you start? Yeah, yeah. Please. Sure, 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 sure. I will, I will, I will, I will pick and choose a few questions. Uh, firstly, I think uh, some of them are uh, interested in the having a career uh, in in data center. So if you could tell them how can they have career or what sort of skills and certifications are needed to have a career in data centers. Okay, so. Are you able to see my screen? No. No, sir. OK, all right. Oh, it's not important. OK, all right. Let me uh, briefly talk about it. So data center as um, industry requires people. Not only from technology, but various infrastructure areas as well. So suppose if you are uh, in, you know, being in power generation or uh, renewable uh, generation. So you, you, you can fit in the ecosystem, data center ecosystem, because, you know, you need renewable power. Then there are people who would be operating and maintaining and handling the data centers. They would be some people. They'll be people with some technical background. They need to be uh, able to. Uh, they need to be able to uh, troubleshoot, understand a consumer's, uh, a customer's problem, and uh, make informed decisions and. Uh, you know, tell the technicians 
uh, what to do in terms of uh, taking care of it, then the other thing is that the building of data center itself, you need to have project management skills. You need to have um, you need to have uh, you know some some experience in infrastructure industry where you not only you know I mean some some exposure um, or at least education infrastructure infrastructure like many of you are uh, in the AIM I am batch as well so th that is going to equip you with um, building and managing of data center industry as well uh, business as well uh, so that's infrastructure technology uh, power and you know so these are some of the key areas and uh, you know some telecom would be experience would also be helpful um yeah and, and of course uh, uh, you know a, all you guys who are studying uh, at AIM, you should, uh, you know, all your course course materials, I think, is well equipped to uh, provide you with all the knowledge that is required uh, in the areas that I talked about uh, and will be required for the data center industry as well. So, yeah, whether it's finance, project management, uh, any of the policy related uh, uh, or the technology management. So any of these will be helpful for you. OK, sir, next question. Sir, I will, I will just plug together a few questions because I feel that uh, they are mostly, uh, I mean, that they have asked, uh, they are of similar nature rather. So uh, there are questions related to related to what if uh, some sort of a power fluctu fluctuation happened in that case uh, uh, what is the loss uh, that you will have to bear same is the case with natural disasters so these are the some of uh, these are some of the questions that have come and also uh, one question related to uh, whether the data stored in the data center is insured a good question so uh, so data loss is a very big problem uh, and that cannot happen. So what happens? Uh, so it's good question uh, and I, I'll give you a little more information on it uh, actually, which uh, I could have earlier. So you have to build in redundancies. You cannot just have one data center in one place. Uh, suppose, imagine in Vizac, right? Uh, so let's take an example of Vizac. It's a great uh, 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 place to talk about. So Vizac is prone to cyclones and, uh, you know, natural calamities as well, right? Chennai is, you know, a few years back, there was a huge flood over there, right? Um, so imagine you have a data center in, uh, in, Vizac. What we would need is a redundancy, which means an exact replica of the data in a particular data center being kept somewhere else. So which means that there is mirroring continuously happening of whatever data you store in your primary location at another secondary location as well. So so you could be, you know, in. In that park itself, there could be two different sources uh, or places uh, where buildings where the data could be stored or two different locations in Vizac itself. Or two different cities totally. There could be, uh, you know, a part of the, you know a set of data which is being stored in uh, in one city could also be replicated and stored in another city so that's how you build in uh, you know 
you you cannot put everything in one place and, and just uh, you know rest assured that it so uh, there could be natural calamity there could be technology related problem there could be power outage there could be many factors which could impact a particular data center but from from a client's perspective uh, you know there cannot be a compromise so they need the data so at that point if when there is a problem in a particular data center a redundancy uh, data center where a similar copy of the data center uh, data is stored the client or the consumer can access the data from there and for, from a consumer's perspective uh, you know you won't even know where the data is coming from uh, from location a or location b so uh, you know you will not notice so uh, but all this in the background uh, you have to basically uh, so you're doubling your work in data center pretty much um, you know you, you create uh, redundancies and uptime is extremely important, so you, you cannot compromise on that. And uh, so you need to have those redundancies. And there could be many sources of uh, calamity which can impact. Uh, so you need to make provisions for that as well. So okay. uh, the, one of the follow up question was that uh, uh, does uh, insurance companies uh, cover data loss? So that is uh, uh, insurance companies. That's another part of the bill, personal data protection bill that we are uh, looking at. Uh, how much, uh, you know, how the data would be insured uh, as well. So that is uh, part of the data protection bill. Sir, uh, there is a question which uh, is asked by Ravi Kumar, where they, where he's saying that uh, how does how does a data center make money, and secondly, uh, does it vary from client to client? Again, uh, when there is an agreement between the client, how it is ensured that that is another question by another person. So, uh, how it is ensured that uh, the data security is not compromised? Okay. All right. So let's uh, how how make money. Let's take that first. Uh, uh, you suppose if you have a big client, you would enter into a large uh, multi year agreement with them. It could be five year, 10 year agreement with them. Uh, and uh, so suppose Google is our client uh, and uh, we will have a five year or a seven year or a 10 year agreement with them. Uh, and uh, uh, so they, they will just be in that data center for for that much amount of time uh, and uh, so so that's that uh, in terms uh, so you, and they pay you uh, revenue for the usage of the, your data center facility and uh, our rates in india is very competitive compared to the rates being charged in the US or um, uh, or Europe or Singapore even. So, uh, you know, we, we will be, uh, our Adani data centers will be more competitive compared to any of the data centers in other places in the world from Google's perspective. And that is why it is, well, you know, for them, it's another reason for them to be uh, doing business with us uh, at uh, in India. Uh, so, you know, just to give an example, uh, data data center cost can be reduced by almost 25 to 30 percent by being in India. Uh, and that's a huge saving uh, for a client like Google if by being in India. So. So that's uh, so that's one nature of revenue, uh, and then I also talked about edge client location, where you know it could be month to month, year to year kind of uh, uh, contract 
that you may have um, with the client. So that's uh, the other way of, uh, you know, how the revenue uh, is generated. And uh, um, and what was the second question, Jimit? So uh, the second question uh, was that uh, uh, one is uh, whether uh, it it uh, the agreement varies from client to client and uh, yes, uh, it does. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, sir, one last question, which is uh, from Mr. Kesha Bhatti, actually. So uh, he he has asked this question that what is the cost of one hour downtime in the data center, and how does this impact SLS with clients? So it depends, you know, uh, cost of downtime. Uh, it varies from uh, the kind of data center you have, the services that you offer uh, in a particular data center. As I said, there are different types of data centers, and this, and then services that you offer uh, in a in a data center. So it's it going to be different. But uh, you know, downtime is uh, is a, is a no no at all, right? Uh, so it, it is very steep uh, penalty uh, for downtime, and we, we talk about you know there are mul there are different kinds of data centers. And we, we want to be uh, operating at 99.99%. Um, uh, there are different tiers of data centers, and we want to be at that scale, at that level of data centers. So, and as I said, uh, you know, there will be redundancies uh, in data centers. So, from a client perspective, uh, from a uh, Con and their consumers perspective there will be total uh, you know seamless uh, availability of data happening uh, so that there is no you know there's no downtime for a consumer so there is another question that is about to come in our way i think he can uh, speak for himself actually uh, uh, dr uh, kamal sharma is uh, about to ask a question to you. So he is asking that uh, since I have declared that th this will be the last question, so <laughs> whether he can ask or not. Uh, Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Dr. Pankaj. How are you? Hi. Yes. So nice to see you. Yeah, pleasure here as well. So the question was, you know, are we banking on uh, Indians you know that uh, true Indianness, that you know, um, closeness to nation, and you know, being in India and using Indian kind of uh, uh, sentiment also to 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 sell our uh, data center product. Yeah, so uh, that's a very tricky question. Uh, uh, let me. Uh, take an attempt at it. Uh, we don't, our goal is not uh, to, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, however, it's an imperative because, you know, if you need, uh, so let's talk about data privacy, whether it's the through the data, personal data protection bill that we are talking about uh, at the national level. You know, that is a, the need of the country and uh, it is going to benefit the data centers in India because in that bill, what is required is that, you know, certain categories within within data data. Also, there are different categories of data. There are some personal data. There are non personal data. Then in personal data, there are sensitive data, there is critical data, and then, you know, rest of the personal data. So uh, uh, sensitive data could be of national, uh, you know, security related matters, which there is no way it can go out of the country. So that will have to be stored in India and processed in India. So uh, in, in data center, there is both right storage and processing both happening. Uh, so so if you talk about 
sensitive personal data category no no uh, for going out so which means good for indian data center industries uh, then comes uh, the uh, critical personal data it could be uh, you know an individual's financial information it could be uh, an individual's uh, I, something called personal identifier pii personal identifier uh, information those kind of data also needs to be stored in india only i mean that's the bill which has not uh, uh, you know uh, uh, been passed as yet uh, that's uh, however it if someone needs it they can take it out for processing and then bring it back after processing and store it in india so which means you need the data centers uh, those set of data uh, all, the critical personal data also needs to reside on a data center in india good for us then the third category is the personal data you know the general personal data uh, which you know the users give permission uh, for them uh, for uh, to the uh, to the companies they uh, are interacting with say amazon or google uh, those data can be taken out stored out uh, what we are saying is that even those da data a copy of those data uh, should be kept in india and that's a big tussle between us uh, and um, some of the lobbies that are uh, the technology company lobbies they are saying no those data we should be able to take out to wherever we want in the in the world uh, but then you know what we say is then it's a, it will there'll be a matter of jurisdiction that will come into play Uh, you know if you store it outside you know uh, that particular jurisdiction would apply so th those kind of uh, things uh, so that's the third category and non personal data is uh, a data where you know they can take out store it and process it anywhere else uh, but we are saying uh, again uh, as adani when we we are uh, uh, lobbying for that bill um, uh, we are saying that a copy of non personal data also should be stored here because when you talk about non personal data uh, uh, i mean uh, it, that also like the e-commerce data like the, it, it it could include uh, data as like the likes of an individual likes um, uh, you know it could be significant uh, uh, it could be of significant importance um, from the privacy perspective you know someone else in the world is knowing about a like or a dislike of you uh, so you know even even it's even though it is categorized as non non personal data uh, from the bills perspective uh, but you know it has significance uh, you know sensitivity around it as well uh, but the technology companies are saying no those data should be there. so th that's those are some of the things which needs to be sorted out so this is how Uh, you know the the bill is uh, going to help uh, you know the the individuals who whose data we are talking about the country as a whole and the data center industry for us yeah a, a quick one on that are there examples of uh, uh, data center hackings anywhere in the world or the hacking happens at the users premises when they take that data out of the data center yeah so so uh, th that hacking of the data center is not possible uh, it, what happens most because there's lot of security uh, at, at the server level and and data centers are uh, servers right so there is tremendous amount of uh, data uh, 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 there's a lot of uh, uh, security data security at the server level w what typically happens is when the data is at on a consumer's client device or in transmission where th the hacking is possible uh, correct so you know I i'm not saying you know it's just uh, uh, full proof uh, the servers servers you know I, i i am of the era i come from the era where i have seen servers 
uh, you know, right, right in our departments getting hacked. Uh, but time have changed significantly. The layer of security uh, on servers have become, you know, pretty robust. Uh, so there is more incidents, and the, from a hacker's perspective, you know, for them, uh, they, they pick easy targets, right? And uh, uh, you know, and there are many of those uh, on client devices and data and transmission. Correct. Thank you. All right. I'm sure Dr. Singh would agree that uh, the questions were also as interesting as his uh, talk was. And the Absolutely. icing on the cake was, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Sharma's question. So uh, before, before you leave, sir, we would uh, like to thank you for uh, your valuable time that you have spent here. You have taken out this time from your very busy schedule, and we are thankful uh, for that. And uh, we would also, you know, like you to be, you know, uh, coming here and uh, uh, gracing us with your uh, presence sometimes with uh, such insightful talks as and when possible. Okay. So, uh, sir, uh, lastly, I would just like uh, I, I'm I'm pre pretty sure the students would have, you know, uh, have had a great time and uh, i would uh, i'm sure that they would like to you know uh, have uh, we would like to have a round of applause for sir so please students please if you can un unmute your mic and uh, have a good round of applause for sir uh, thank you sir thank you so very much thank you i had a good time talking to you guys as well thank you Best of luck. Thank you. Your, uh, uh, Dr. Pankaj, can you share your presentation? Yes, I'll forward it. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you.